Hey guys, it's Advanced Mark Freak and I'm here making another tutorial and uh, something that crossed my mind, something that I thought would be quite handy for you guys who want to go on above and beyond in your script is how to incorporate opening and closing doors in your script. So I'm going to go through that and uh, yeah, let's start. So first we, um, first we create a person that will lead us through the door Similar to how Oak leads us through the door at the beginning of the game, this is going to be uh, this is going to have a similar effect. So let's just uh, create a random 35. Yep, let's just do this random old lady who will lead us into your rival's house. So now let's start with the script. We start the script as we would any other script. Lock face player because it's a person. And let's uh, throw in a message to be friendly. Mm. Message, message, this is my house. Yeah, it's my house. Box set to six. Now, um, obviously because she is, if I move a month, there we go, because she is facing the wrong way at the moment, she's not facing her door let's just make sure and just make sure uh, look down because she's not facing the door let's make sure rhyme not intended that she is facing the door so uh, if you don't know what I've done apply movement 4 because that is the uh, person event number and I'm just putting in the movement part of this if you don't know how to work with movement, then you should really check out Bower Lump stuff. Uh, I think I've done a, a, a video on movement, I'm not sure. Anyway, now we get to a new function. Now that she is looking, looking up, that's what that is, look up. Now that she's looking up, we come to a new function called open door. It's not rocket science really. Now what to open the door you have to locate the door tile. So if we just use the grid just to ensure it is this tile right there above the lady. And as you can see, oh, it keeps, it's going to change but I'll zoom into it. As you can see it says offset OS offset 07. Now the offset symbol means that it's that um, the code is in hex. Yeah. So we need to transfer that from hex to just binary, just numbers. Um, I've already worked it out from before, so mine is 15 and just 7. But if you guys need to work it out, then feel free to go online and find a hex to binary converter. Or some advanced maps, some older versions, uh, don't put it into hex straight away. So if you have that, that's fine. Now we put in another new function called door flush, and similar it has a similar effect as pause move as in it waits for the door to open before carrying on with the script it waits for it to fully open now that we've done that let's actually move inside the place apply movement 4 and we do walk in now she only needs to walk one step forward and if I remember correctly one step forward is uh, well, forward, up, same thing. Uh, oh, it's 11. Here we go. Oops, almost forgot binary, binary. OX11. Oh, and um, OX60. Oh, now, if you have been through the whole of the movement thing, you will see that OX60 oh, makes the sprite disappear, removes the sprite, but the, but, but the person can still be interacted with. But in this case, because it's, I'll carry it on and you can see what happens. So, the by doing OX60, it gives the illusion that the character has walked into the house and is now inside, rather than just waiting outside. Oh, so let me add pause. No, not pause move yet. Don't forget, the player is walking with this random old lady. And uh, the player's um, number, the player's definition is OXFF. And we'll just do walking. Uh, walking one 
binary binary um, this this will be two steps up and then he will need to disappear okay, what's going on here two steps here then he will need to disappear all right I'm just waiting for a bit longer so you can see what's going on okay now we can add in pause move a zero you might see me do OX0000. It's pretty much the same thing. They have the same effect. Uh, then we do close door. Similar to open door, it uh, does the animation of the door closing. We add door flush again to wait for it. And um, now, uh, this is the part where I just want, because I don't want to just give you these functions. Look, this is door flush, this is open door, this is closed door. I want to try applying this to where you would be in an actual game. So I'm going to set flag OX1250 and I am going to give this sprite, this old lady, the person ID of 1250. What this will do is it will keep her removed so she will have disappeared and she will be no longer inside, uh, well on this map 3.0 but if we move into, oops, save changes. If we move into 4.2, which is the rival's house, it makes sense to add that lady in the house. So that way, it, it, the illusion is that she is inside the house now and that she is not outside anymore. So that, you know, that is uh, a, handy, a handy tip if you guys are making your own. Uh, kind of stories like that. So oh, the other lady does not need um, the person ID because she's like a whole different sprite. We only want this one to disappear. So now that she's got the person ID 1250, close, uh, not close, just minimize that, we can carry on. And now we come to a, another function which you might not have heard of called warp. And this teleports the player to another map. And what you would do and uh, the three numbers that come after this is uh, the first number would be uh, what this but, oh, I can't remember these what they're called oh, I know this let me see what the ah here we go what the bank number is and wait, what's the other one map there you go the first number is what the bank number is oh here we go so the first one would be four the second one is what the map number is so that would be two and the last one would be which warp in that room do you want to be teleported to. And how to check this is if we go in events and if you're uh, selected, as you can see the sprites, then click the sprite button and you can see the other, other events. And um, we click on this first, uh, this first warp, this middle one, because that's where we want him to come in. And we check the number and the number is zero. So we add zero. Then, uh, the problem with warps is that after you warp a player, the script has to end because you can't really add anything after that, apparently. I read that somewhere. I think I tried it myself and it messed up, but you guys experiment with that. And, uh, yeah, so after the warp, you just release an end, and that should be enough, really. Uh, I'll just start saving this. And um, in that same place I was reading, that some people ask, oh, how come then in the Oak script at the beginning where he walks inside the lab and then he walks ahead and you carry on, and then you get your Pokemon, etc., etc., um, how come that carries on? And the reason for that is because of something else called level scripts, which I don't think I've been through, but they're quite advanced level scripts are. So um, what level scripts are is basically when you step into a map, then something happens. So if you think about it like, if you think about it like, um, oh, you've been warped into that map, and then you move on to another script, then that might help you plan longer sequences, maybe boss sequences, or maybe if you're recreating the starter sequence. And yeah, so I'll have to go through level scripts another time. They're quite complex. A lot of things to check. Whew. Okay. Here we go. Where is it? Here we go. GBA file. Yep, I don't even, don't even need to say it anymore. Uh, 
8,000 shows its first script. Burn and do all of this. Let's go back to advanced map. Let's see this lady. Give her the script. Uh, yep, just make just ensure 1250 there. Person event four. Save this a few times. Now I've gone ahead and uh, made a save file um, that's past all the oak stuff. So let me just quickly re-upload the ROM. If you guys are ever testing and like you just quickly, I'll change one line of code, blah blah blah, testing, testing. It's okay to, um, well yeah, to uh, to just load to use the save states and things. But you make sure to uh, reopen the ROM file, open and open the ROM again. Otherwise, no changes will have occurred. And then feel free, as long as you're not standing right next to the person, you're going to edit then it should be okay. Like, give yourself a map distance, if that makes sense. Anyway, move the mouse out of the way. Now, um, I've not I've not made the script so that whichever side you talk to her from, then you just, it follows you straight through the door. I've only done it so that if you talk to her right in front of you, well, if you talk to her when you're right in front of her, then the script will go smoothly. But I'll have to show you another time how to alter your script just in case the sprite you make is in a situation where the player can talk to it from any side. But anyway, let's just start. This is my house. Dun -dun -dun, the door opens, they walk in, and she's apparently there by the looks of it. And I think that's uh, really smooth. Now we go back out. Uh, lady's not there. We can walk around here. And we can walk inside the house again. Anywho, this is uh, how to create uh, the door scripts. I hope this has been very helpful for you guys. Um, yeah, I think it's all gone well. I think it went smoothly. If there's uh, anything you guys want to add or anything you guys want to say, you do it in the comment section below. Uh, read the description for helpful tips that I usually throw in there. Anything I might have forgotten to say or anything I think is really important, I usually throw it there. The whole script, as usual, will be copy and pasted into the description below. And uh, feel free to subscribe and tell your friends who advance map as well. And I'll be back with another tutorial.